So hello and good morning to our lecturer, Ms. Shazani Akifa, with the Chagudi, our Culture Diversity in Malaysia lecturer. So for today, I'm going to talk about the architecture in Malaysia. So architecture in Malaysia is a combination of many styles, from Islamic and Chinese style to those brought by European colonies. Many, many Malay architecture has changed due to these influences. Houses in the north are similar to those in Thailand, while those in the south are similar in, to those in Jawa. So, new materials such as glasses, nails were brought in by the Europeans, changing the architecture. Houses are built for tropical conditions based on stilts with high roof and large windows allowing air to flow through the house and cool it down. Wood has been the main building material for much of Malaysia's history. It is used for everything from the simple kampung to royal palaces. In the Greece Milan traditional house are entirely free of nails. Besides wood, other common materials such as bamboo and leaves were used. The Islanan Kenangan in Kuala Kangsar was built in 1926 and it the only Malay palace with the bamboo walls. The oral, the oral asal of East Asia live in long houses with villages with water villages. Long houses are elevated and on stilts and can house 20 to 100 of families. Water villages are also built on stilts with house connected with planks and most transport by boats. So for Chinese architecture can be divided into two types traditional and also Baba Nyonya. So Baba Nyonya household are made of colorful pipes and have large indoor courtyards. Indian architecture come with the Malaysian Indians, reflecting the architecture of Southern India where the most originate from. Some Sikh architecture were also imported. Malacca, which was a traditional center of trade, has a large variety of building styles. Large wooden structures such as the, pal the palace of Sus Sultan Mansur Shah exists from the early periods. Chinese influences can be seen in brightly decorated temples and terrace shop hubs. The largest remaining Portuguese structure in Malacca is the Efamosa Fort. Sorry, Efamosa Fort. Other colonial buildings include the Dutch statues the Dutch colonial Tom Brick buildings and buildings built by the British such as the Memorial Hall which combine Baroque and Islamic architecture. So for the architecture, the shapes and the size of houses differ from state to state. Common elements in Peninsula Malaysia included pitch roofs, veranda and high ceilings raised on steel on four ventilations. The woodwork in the house is often intricately carved. The floors are at different level depending on the function of the room. Mosque mosques have traditionally been based on Japanese architecture. In modern times, the government has promoted different projects from the tallest twin buildings in the world, the Pratona Stone Tower, to the whole Garden City Putrajaya. Malaysia firms are developing skyscraper designs that are specifically for tropical mates. I'm sorry, tropical climates. Holidays. So Malaysia has many holidays, many public holidays. So Malaysia observes a number of holidays and festivities throughout the year, on both the federal and state level. Other festivals are observed by particular ethnic or religion groups, but not on public holidays. The main holidays of each major religion are public holidays. The most widespread holiday is the Hari Merdeka Independence Day, otherwise known as Merdeka, on 31st of August. It is commemorate the independence of Federation of Malaya. This as well as Labor Day, 1 May, the King Birthday, first Saturday of June and some other festivals are major national public holidays. 
Federal Territory Day is celebrated in these three federal territories on 1st of February. Malaysia Day, held on 16th September, commemorates the formations of Malaysia through the United of Malaya, Singapore, Sabah, and Sarawak, although it is celebrated mainly in East Asia. New Year's Day, Chinese New Year, and the start of the Islamic calendar are all public holidays. Muslim holidays are hardly prominent in Malaysia. The most important of these is Hari Raya Puasa, also called Hari Raya Adifitri, which is the Malay translation of Eid Al-Fitri. It is a festival honored by Muslims worldwide, marking the end of Ramadan, the fasting month. They also celebrate Hari Raya Haji, they also call Hari Raya Aidil Adha, Awal Muharram, the Islamic New Year, and Mali Durasu, the birthday of our prophet. Malay Chinese typically hold the same festival observed by Chinese around the world. Chinese New Year is the most prominent, lasting for 50 days. Hindus in Malaysia celebrated Deepavali, the festival of light, while Thai Pusam is a celebration in which pilgrims from all over the country meet at the Batu Caves, Vesak. Vesak Day, the day of Buddha's birth, is a public holiday too. Malaysia's Christian community observes most of the holiday observes by Christians elsewhere, most notably Christmas and Easter. Good Friday, however, is the public holiday in the two border states. The Harvest Festival of Gawai in Sarawak and Kaamatan in Sabah are also important for East Malaysia. Despite most of all the festivals being identified with a particular ethnic or religious group, festivities are often participated by in all Malaysians. Hello guys, today I will discuss about traditional music in Malaysia, especially in Sarawak. There is a lot of traditional music in Sarawak as you can see in this picture a man who was a playing musical instrument as a guitar the guitar is called a sape the use of the sape is used for Iban community in dancing the traditional dance of Naja okay. next is the musical instrument called a drum or gendang. In Iban community, there a type of drum are small in size and some are large in size. This is used the use of this drum is for Iban community to perform such as ngajat and silat. This drum are made of brass wood and animal skin like their skit. Finally, a musical instrument as you can see in this picture, a bump of color, a gong or tawai. Use this gong to tell someone die by hitting this gong three times. Society used to this gong was used to buy a land because this gong is very valuable and very useful to the Iban. Hi, my name is Dr. Tasrim. So today I would share about um, two things which is Malaysia literature and uh, the mass in the mass in media Malaysia. So we start first with the Malaysia literature. So for the Malaysia literature is the collection of literary works produced in the Malaysia Peninsula until 1963 and in the Malaysia thereafter, right? So uh, Malaysian literature is typically written in any of the countries for main language. For example, um, Malaysia, English, China, and Tamil. So, it portrays various aspects of Malaysian life and comprise an important part of the culture of Malaysia. So, we, uh, so we go on. The earliest work of Malaysia literature were transmitted orally in the absence of writing script. So oral literature encompassed as variety of genre of Malaysia folklore, 
such as myths, legends, folk tales, romance, epics, poetry and proverbs, origin story and oral history. So, oral traditional drift thrived among the Malays but continues to survive among the indigenous people of Malaysia including the orang asli and numerous ethnic group in Sarawak and Sabah. The mass media in Malaysia. Okay, so the mass media in Malaysia is includes television, radio, newspapers and web-based media such as bloggers. So many media outlets are either owned directly by the government of Malaysia. Uh, for example, Bernama or, or owned by component parties of the Barisan National Coalition which formed the government until May 2018 so, which is owned by the United Malays National Organization Oppos- Opposition Party PAS and PKR now the main parties of the ruling Pakatan Harapan Coalition Publish their own newspaper Haraka and Suara Keadilan, respectively, which are openly so along regular publication. Right, and then since conventional media is so tightly controlled by the government, um, Malaysia has a lively alternative media scene, characterized by such new portal as Malaysia Kini and the Malaysia Insider which take advantage of the government uh, please not to cancel the internet despite its strangler hole and most mass media outlets so. Hi, my name is Alina so I'm gonna talk about Malaysian art Traditional Malaysian art is mainly set on the craft of carving, weaving and silver sweeping Traditional art range from hand-woven basket from rural, rural areas to the silver work of the Malaysian court. Common artwork include ornamental keris and betel nut set. Luxury textile known as songket are made as well as traditional pattern batik fabric. In, indigenous is Malaysia are known for their wooden mask. Malaysian art has expanded only recently as before the 1950s Islamic taboos about drawing people and animals were strong. Textiles such as the batik, songket, buah kumbu and tekat are used for decoration often embroidered embar- with a painting or pattern. Traditional jewelry was made from gold and silver adorned with gem and in, in, in East Malaysia Leather, are bit, leather and bead are were used to the same effect. Either wear has been developed in many years. The Labu Sayong is a gourd shaped clay jar that holds water. Pera is famous for this. Also used to store water in the angular terrenang. The Belanga is clay bowl used to cook with a white base that allow that to spray easily. Carved wood is used as ornamentation for many items such as door and window panels. Wood carving was very never an industry but an art. Traditionally, wood carvers spend years simply preparing the wood due to a belief that wood cover need to be a perfect match with their wood. The wood also had to match the buyer so wood carving was a very ritualized task. Each ethnic, each ethnic group has distinct performing art. With little overlap between them, Malay art shows some North Indian influence. A form of Kaul Mat Yong, incorporating dance and drama, remains strong in the Kelantan state. However, older Malay Thai, Malayan Thai, performing art such as Mak Yong has declined in the popularity throughout the country due to their Hindu Buddhist origin. Since the Islami- Islamization period, the Art and Tourism Ministry have focused on newer dancers of Portuguese, Middle Eastern, or Mughal origin. Malay traditional dance include Joget Melayu and Zapin in recent years, DK Barat 
has grown in popularity and it is actively promoted by state government as a culture icon. Sila is another popular Malay martial art and dance from belief to increase a person's spiritual strength. Wayang Kulit, or known as Shadow Puppet Theater, has been popular in Malaysia for centuries. The puppets are usually made with cow and buffalo skin and are carved and painted by hand. Play done, plays done with shadow puppets are often based on traditional story, especially state tales from the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. Traditionally, theatrical, theatrical music is performed only by men. Japan's immigrant brought a kudu kepang to Joho and it's a form of dance where dancers sit on mock horses and tells the tale of Islamic war. The Chinese community brought traditional lion dancer and dragon dancer. With them, white Indians brought art from such as Bharatanayam and Bangra. Colonialism also brought another art from, such as Portuguese, Farapera, and Branyo. There are variety of traditional dancers which often have very strong spiritual significance. Different tribes from West and East Malaysia have different dances. Now I'm going to talk about Malaysia cuisine. Malaysia cuisine reflects the multi make of its population and is defined by its diversity. Many cultures from Malaysia and the surrounding area have really influenced with strong influence from Malay, Chinese, Indian, Thai, Japanese and Sumatran cuisine. Much of this due to Malaysia being a part of the Asian Spice Road. The cuisine is very similar to that of Singapore and Brunei and also be assembled to Filipino cuisine. The Malaysian state different have varied dishes and it's often food in Malaysia is different from the original dishes. Sometimes food not found in it is original culture is assimilated to in the another. For example, Chinese restaurants in Malaysia often serve Malaysian dishes. Food from one culture is something cooking using style taken for another. This means that although many Malaysian dishes originate from another culture, they have their own identity. Often the food in Malaysia is different from the original dishes. For example, Chinese food is often sweeter in Malaysia version than the original. The Peranakan Chinese who moved to Malaysia countries ago have their own unique cuisine that Chinese cooking technique with Malay ingredients. During the dinner, food is not served in course but all at once. Rice is popular in many Malaysian dishes. Chilies is commonly found in Malaysian dishes. Although the although that does not make them spice. Noodles are common. What is rarely used in Malaysia because of the large Muslim population some celebrations have food associated with them and mooncakes are often eaten during Mooncake Festival. Assalamualaikum and hi. Today, I want to talk about background ethic in Malaysia. Malaysia is a cosmopolitan, multi and multi ethnic nation with numerous ethnic groups maintaining distinct culture identities. The indigenous tribes of the area as well as the Malay who settled there in accents at times. Contrable to the area's original culture, the Chinese and India civilization have had a significant impact on the regions since commerce with those countries begins. The Malay who make up more than half of Malaysia's population were politi political, power, and belong to group 
known as the Bumiputra. The native language Bahasa Malaysia is a country's official language or Malay or Muslim. According to the Malaysia constitutions for generation, the Chinese have been settling in Malaysia and they are the country's second largest ethnic group. The first Chinese to settle in the streets settle means particular, particularly in and around Malacca. In, Mal Mal in Malaysia, the Indian community is the smallest of the three main ethnic groups. They are fluent in a number of South Asian languages. That's all background ethnic uh, for me. I want to talk about clothing in Malaysia. Clothes in a refer to clothing items such as shirts, pants, and shoes because Malaysia is a cosmopolitan country. Uh, each of the Malay, Chinese, India, and hundreds of other indigenous uh, communities of the Malay Peninsula and Borneo has its own traditional and really, really gay dress which is gender specific and adaptable to local influence and situation. The Baju Melayu is traditional Malay apparel for men and is a frequently worn with a sampang, songko or tongkolo. Malay ladies on the other hand wear an a Baju Kurong um, a tudong selendang or kain dagang is a type of tudong. The baju kebaya is an, another pro, prominent traditional female etc. In Malaysia, Chinese males wear a tang suit, which is a traditional Chinese clothing. A tang suit is a such short uh, of garment that has a blue color and a belly knot. Mm. It typically consists of floral patterns. Chinese ladies and the other hands mm, wear the chongsam, a one-piece dress with a color that is clothed horizontally with little clips or tang tangles because it is com <coughs> because it is composed of a soft fabric like silk it may have sl slits it may have lids on the sides um saris are worn by india in malaysia as they are everywhere else in the globe and they are actually um, part with a particles of the same color the emerald and is a draps over over the shoulder and the petticoats petticoats in one ones over the belly bottom to support the sari which can be constructed of a vortery <coughs> of a vort of fabrics. India males wear the kurta a knee lit lit colorly colorless shirts with typical white or pastel color for formal I got <coughs> of course case of course race.